Hi everyone, it is January 13, 2019. So, I want to show you what has been captured in the sky over London. And a lot of people, well not a lot of people, but some channels are saying that this is an indication of a catastrophe that is coming. It's natural um, plasma, plasma, plasma. I don't think it's natural at all, but let's take a look. What's going on? What's going on? Okay. Take a look at what HARP can do, the high frequency heating of the ionosphere. And this is plasma interacting with radio waves. Okay. So. It is uh, not exactly the uh, design, but very similar. Very similar. I'm not, I, I just don't understand how it is that people can claim that they know the truth, nobody else does. Don't watch anybody else but these two people who know the truth, and I don't feel like getting into a pissing match with anyone. But when people come out so strongly, stating definitively that they are the ones with the truth and everybody else on YouTube, don't even bother to watch them because we're only about deceiving you and uh, that man doesn't have the technology to create this, that this is a signature of a plasma catastrophe that the powers that be don't want you to know. They, they want you to think that it's them, that they have the technology to create this, but they don't apparently. Look, I, I just don't even know how to address that. But, um, they have been doing, militaries have been doing so many experiments for decades with the ionosphere, with uh, artificial air glow, creating artificial plasma. So the other claim is that all of the colors that we are seeing in the sky like this this is plasma, and it's yet another signature of this plasma catastrophe that is coming. It's natural. Um, man is not doing this. Well, I have to, you know, I have to say, I'm beginning to think that that channel is, you know, wanting to deceive everybody into thinking that Perhaps they're wanting to take the onus off all of those who are experimenting with all of the natural processes all over uh, the earth. And I think at this point, with all of the, the cumulative effects of all of these experiments, the geoengineering, the weather modification, the harp and harp like frequencies that we have seen only increase. The physicists have said that, and this came out years ago, 
these physicists have said that the power of HARP, the power of the high frequency heating of the ionosphere, and that then reverberating back to Earth, the power of it could have reverberations around the Earth unintended but out of control effects that it could be cataclysmic so uh, I just want to show you this is an example of man-made plasma and look at the color look at the color that it becomes Wow. All right. Now, not too long ago, I claimed that the pink that we were seeing in the sky, the horizon, that layer of pink, I said that it may be a, a result of the amount of lithium that they have been dumping in the sky? Well, I'm not sure now. And it could be plasma. It could be all of what they are doing with the ionosphere, with harp-like facilities. Um, I'm going to only link below to this video. Harp rings created by U.S. military plasma heating via radio waves proved. Um, let's see. Heater induced air glow. This could be plasma created. And how they do it is by exciting the electrons. And no, I am not an expert in this field, but ionospheric optical emissions generated by high power, high frequency transmitters, HARP, or HARP like facilities. And understand, I'm not talking about that HARP facility in Alaska, Doppler radar is like mini harp stations and they have harp like facilities around the world and they've only been in injecting uh, higher and higher power densities into the ionosphere so what man excuse me what man is doing here of course it's going to affect the natural processes. So I don't understand how anybody can say and make a claim so definitively that man does not have the technology. All right, well, so the ionospheric optical emissions generated by high power, high frequency transmitters or heaters have been studied by the ionospheric physics community for several decades. Labeled artificial air glow or artificial aurora, these emissions are at a basic level caused by radio waves accelerating electrons into collisions with neutral species which then either emit a photon through an excitation process or possibly become ionized. We know that our atmosphere now is ionized. This interaction generally occurs at or near a resonance in the ionosphere where the radio wave interacts strongly with the plasma. Ionospheric modification for the beam of powerful radio emission directed along magnetic field lines is developed, determine strong amp amplification of heating and acceleration of plasma electrons. It results in a dramatic enhancement of optic emission from the magnetic zenith region in 
ionospheric layer. Um, now, the magnetic field has been acting up. All right. So along with this plasma catastrophe is the claim that the magnetic pole is shifting, that we have a pole shift going on. I'm not disputing that. What I am disputing is how anybody could claim that this is natural, considering what not only our military has been doing, but other military, China and Russia in particular, what they have been doing, their experiments with the ionosphere, that affecting the magnetic field. So here, this article, which was sent to me by a subscriber, um, January 9, 2019, Earth's magnetic field is acting up and geologists don't know why. Well, we have an awful lot of experts who just don't know why things are happening, why tens of thousands of fish are ending up dead on beaches, and why we have birds falling out of the sky dead. They just don't know. But nobody goes past that wall that has been erected. The military industrial complex is beyond that wall. No, we're never going to look at what the military is doing. We're just going to claim we don't know why. So here, um, what are they saying? The wandering pole. And I had highlighted all of that, but the highlight's gone. So um, they are claiming that something strange is going on at the top of the world. The Earth's north magnetic pole has been skittering away from Canada and towards Siberia driven by liquid iron sloshing within the planet's core. The magnetic pole is moving so quickly that it has forced the world's geomagnetism experts into a rare move. A rare move, which is studying it, studying it with different models and what the hell is going on here. All right. We all know that HARP, the high frequency heating of the ionosphere, can shoot back extremely low frequencies that can penetrate the Earth's core. Can that then cause a sloshing within the planet's core? Absolutely. Um, the problem lies partly with the moving pole and partly with other shifts deep within the planet liquid churning in Earth's core generates most of the magnetic field. In 2016, part of the magnetic field temporarily accelerated deep under North South America and the Eastern Pacific Ocean. That could have occurred from an increase in the power, the wattage, the and we, look, people have actually stated that they're shooting trillion, they're using trillion watts, a trillion watts. Um, but even if it's not a trillion, it is in the billions. And, you know, I'm going to take you through some uh, documents that show that they have been for decades doing experiments that have affected the magnetic field. Um, so, yeah, it appears to be racing towards Siberia now. And I thought it was interesting here. In the mid-1990s, it picked up speed from, well, it picked up speed. The magnetic field in the mid-1990s picked up speed. There were two stages of the HARP facility, its construction. The second stage occurred in the mid-90s. When they, and that second stage <clears throat> was the construction of 
the full array, the full power of HARP, the high frequency heating of the ionosphere. So it doesn't surprise me that it picked up speed in 1990 when they were shooting far more powerful frequencies into the ionosphere. And here by 2001, it had entered the Arctic Ocean. In 2007, uh, they sent a team up to locate the pole. In 2018, the pole crossed the international dateline into the Eastern Hemisphere. It is currently making a beeline for Siberia. All right. Um, magnetic zenith. They have been, uh, and it's not just harp that affects the magnetic field. It's also our Gwen system, the Gwen towers, the extremely low frequencies that shoot off emit through the ground. When you have these powerful frequencies, especially the Gwen system, the Gwen towers, shooting off extremely powerful frequencies that go through the ground, it's only logic. You just you don't have to be an expert or a physicist or a harp expert to understand that you're going to be affecting the natural processes, certainly the, the, the natural resonance of the earth, that human resonance, that the earth, it, and that all life balances with, that human resonance has been altered by man. Plasma created by harp glow plasma. I don't believe that this is natural. I believe it is induced. It's the high frequency um, heating of the ionosphere. High frequency induced air glow. But then couple that with all of the aerosol spraying the dumping of the chemicals and the heavy metals into the at atmosphere, you are going to alter the atmosphere. Um, here's another study on the onset of high frequency induced air glow at HARP. Um, artificial optical emissions in the thermosphere induced by powerful radio waves. High power, high frequency radio waves beamed into the ionosphere with O-mode polarization cause plasma turbulence which can accelerate electrons. The electrons collide with neutrals causing artificial optical emissions identical to natural aurora. Optical emissions give direct evidence of electron acceleration by plasma Turbulence, high frequency pumping of the ionosphere also causes electron temperature enhancements, but these alone are not sufficient to explain the optical emissions, uh, the plasma line, and the, is it ISCAT? That is the European HARP-like facility. Um, what is this? What are all these lines that we are seeing here? Optical emissions, air glow. So here it states, air glow's subtle radiance arises from excitation of a different kind. Ultraviolet light from the daytime sun ionizes or knocks electrons off of oxygen and nitrogen atoms and molecules. Now I have posted videos showing you the documents, how they are altering the molecular structure of our atmosphere. This is very dangerous. 
At night, the electrons recombine with their host atoms, releasing energy as light of different colors, including green, red, yellow, blue. That blue air glow over New York City, I do believe, was artificially induced. The brightness, the brightest emission, the one responsible for creating the green streaks. Have you seen a bizarre green in your sky? Like it's a, a line of green. It's air glow. And I do believe that it is artificially induced. Now, I continually say I believe because I don't know. None of us know for sure what is going on. But when we are completely ignoring or actually coming out and saying man does not have the technology to create what we are seeing, I think that is highly irresponsible and suspect. Um, so you can you can do further reading if you're interested. Uh, this is air glow, the green, the pink. Um, yes, have you been seeing that kind of goldish yellow color in your sky? And a green band. I have here in Anderson, South Carolina. But air glow comes in different colors. Red, excited oxygen atoms radiating light at a different energy state are responsible. Another um, chemoluminescent luminescent, uh, reaction takes place when oxygen and nitrogen molecules are busted apart by ultraviolet light high in the atmosphere and recombine to form nitric oxide. You've got the yellow, you've got the blue. So um, here Radio waves make the sky glow, artificial aurora, to be created over western Arctic. And what do they say? The reason why certain types of radio wave transmission cause the upper atmosphere to glow, the same colors as the natural aurora, is a process that's not well understood. And you can read this article, which is actually very interesting because it goes into uh, the extremely low frequencies, the Gwen Towers and HARP, their connection with one another, weather modification, also mind control, um, how it affects our mind. Of course it does. If you are affecting the Earth's uh, Schumann resonance that we, uh, it resonates within us and allows us you know, to feel balanced and okay. You're affecting that by shooting off these artificial frequencies. You're going to have an effect on the entire population. Um, but what does it say here? Earth is wrapped in a donut-shaped magnetic field. Circular lines of magnetic flux continuously descend into the North Pole and emerge from the South Pole. The ionosphere, an electromagnetic wave conductor, 100 kilometers, 62 miles above the Earth, consists of a layer of electrically charged particles acting as a shield from solar winds. These are the HARP stations around the world. Now, unfortunately, the HARP light facilities have proliferated and they're rather ubiquitous, ubiquitous right now, um, and they are shooting off so many powerful frequencies all over the Earth. We've seen those frequencies on the MIMIC map. We see the frequencies being emitted from radar stations. This is all so, it's beyond comprehension how man, you know, how how people are, you know, sitting at their computers and they're, well, just with a computer, they can uh, change the frequencies. They can change the wattage, the power of the frequencies. 
but the effect on all of the natural processes, they don't have any <laughs> misgivings about what they're doing. It's really, um, it's kind of scary that we have so many people that are willing to do anything for a paycheck. The ionosphere is being manipulated by the U.S. government scientists along with the Alaskan transmitter called HARP. Along with, I'm sorry, scientists using HARP, which sends focused radiated power to heat up sections of the ionosphere, which bounces power down again, extremely low frequency waves produced by HARP when targeted on selected areas, can weather engineer and create mood changes affecting millions of people. The intended wattage, wattage was uh, 1,700 billion watts of power. Geomagnetic waves and Gwen. Geomagnetic waves naturally coming from the ground. These natural geomagnetic waves are being replaced by artificially created low-frequency ground waves coming from Gwen Towers. Uh, Gwen transmitters placed 200 miles apart. Well, now we see them all over, all over. And along the interstate, every interstate highway in our country is loaded with these transmitters. So, it, the, it, they allow specific frequencies to be tailored to the geomagnetic field strength in each area, allowing the magnetic field to be altered. That's all I'm going to read. You can read more by clicking on the link below. Um, but for anybody to claim, they know that this is a natural happening Plasma, 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 catastrophe. Uh, when we know that HARP can create artificial plasma, can create air glow, they've been doing these experiments forever. Um, you can read this article. This is Rosalie Bertel, background on the HARP project. She goes into you know, teaching us about the Earth's atmosphere, what it consists of, um, the magnetic field, the power of the magnetic field, and then the experiments that were back in 1958. Hey, our military, let's blow up the Van Allen belts that we just discovered in 1958, I think January, and let's blow them up just to see what happens. Well, they did. This, this gigantic experiment created new inner magnetic radiation belts encompass, encompassing almost the whole Earth and injected sufficient electrons and other energetic particles into the ionosphere to cause worldwide effects. The electrons travel back and forth along magnetic force lines, causing an artificial Aurora. This was in 1958. 1962, more experiments. In this experiment, the inner Van Allen belt will be practically destroyed. Earth's magnetic field will be disturbed, ionizing the gaseous components of the atmosphere. Well, that's going to alter the atmosphere. Ionization effect is strengthened. The lower Van Allen belt consisting of charged particles that move along the geomagnetic field lines will similarly be disrupted. This field will be locally destroyed. Countless new electrons will be introduced. And more and more, um, my highlighting is coming off. Oh well. Uh, but <clears throat> one of the purposes of HARP to generate geomagnetic field aligned ionization to control the reflection scattering properties of radio waves. You read through what HARP is all about and you cannot uh, you can't 
escape the effect on the magnetic field. So we've got experts who simply ignore, ignore harp and harp-like facilities. And you have also, you know, people on YouTube claiming that they know the truth and everybody else is deceiving. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time to go to any other channel but this channel that claims that this is natural and we don't have the technology to do any of this when we absolutely do. All links are below.